Okay, so yesterday was my birthday and I had a really nice dinner with my girlfriend, which brings me to the point, a lot of people when they go on a diet, they think they have to not eat and be miserable. That's what happens when you go on a low calorie diet, you have to lower the amount of calories you eat. I never had to do that because I was eating the carnivore diet or a very high meat-based keto diet. So I kept my calories up and I didn't really run in a caloric deficit, but I still lost weight. And every two weeks or so, I did go and have some fun. This is me at an afternoon leaving party with my friends. Uh, this is at a birthday uh, dinner. This is from um, when I went to Okinawa with my girlfriend. Uh, this is from uh, an afternoon of eating I had when friends came over to Taipei from uh, Hong Kong. And this is my birthday dinner. Just really nice food and I drank as well. Um, so it's a misunderstanding that you have to be really miserable when you're dieting. Uh, not at all. The only thing is you cannot eat exactly what you want okay you do have to make a change so i changed from high carbohydrates to high meats with protein and fats and you know why i did that because proteins and fats contrary to the science which i'm saying is wrong because it's funded by the food processed food companies Proteins and fats are actually essential building blocks of the body, okay? Our bodies are made of proteins and fats. They're not made from carbohydrates, okay? Carbohydrates are just an energy source. We can also get energy from proteins and fats, but they go towards building our bodies. Carbohydrates, when you eat a lot of them, when you eat a lot of it, it just becomes stored as body fat. So there's no use for it. It doesn't go into building hormones. It doesn't go into building cells. Last night I ate a, um, this is the beef tongue and shank with uh, an eggy white sauce, really tasty sauce. And I ate four pieces of French bread with that. And then I ate, um, this is pork belly with uh, bamboo shoot and risotto. And then my girlfriend also had some seafood risotto, which is really tasty. And she couldn't finish it, so I ate about a third of her meal. And then I had an ice cream and then beers, um, two beers, and then a cocktail. Okay, so just for dinner, I ate about 2,000 calories, okay? And then, guess what? Two hours later, okay, that night, before we went to bed, I was already hungry. I was starving. So I went to 7-Eleven and brought, I bought Pringles and I finished most of it. So this tub of Pringles has 564 calories in it and I ate at least 500. I, I, I saved the last 64 calories and I didn't eat it. You can hear 64 calories of Pringles left. I didn't finish it because I didn't want to feel bad about myself because I couldn't control myself. But I, I felt like I had to leave some, so I didn't finish the whole thing. But I couldn't control myself because it, it, they, they've designed this to be so tasty. As soon as you start, you want to eat the whole thing. Plus, why did I even feel hungry after I already had such a big meal? Because I ate so much carbohydrates during my meal. I ate all that risotto all that bread, which I didn't take a photo of, and I drank beer, okay? And alcohol will make you wanna eat more. So alcohol once you, makes you wanna eat more, but the carbohydrates also will make people wanna eat more because as soon as you eat the carbo a lot of carbohydrates, I mean, you can eat a little, but if you eat a lot of carbohydrates, then your blood sugar will shoot up and then your insulin will have to go up as well in order to bring the blood sugar level back down to a safe level. And all that blood sugar, first of all, goes into your fat cells and makes you fat. And then, as your blood sugar level goes down, your insulin goes down again, it goes past the normal level, and then your body's going, oh, 
my blood sugar level is too low. Uh, I'm getting hungry, like I gotta eat again. So your body starts sending you signals to go and eat more food. That's why I felt hungry again. Two hours after a really nice meal, a big, big meal, I wanted to eat Pringles again. And this is what happens to a lot of people just from breakfast, okay? They eat a high carbohydrate breakfast, they eat pancakes, or they eat cereals, or they um, drink sugary uh, orange juice or toast, and then they mess up their blood sugar level and they get a huge insulin spike, and then they're hungry two hours later. So do this experiment, okay? Try eating, if you're a guy, eat three eggs for breakfast, or if you're a woman, eat two eggs for breakfast and see how filling that makes you and how long it lasts you for, for the rest of the day. And then you weigh the same amount of cereal or toast and you eat that for breakfast and see how hungry you will feel just two hours later. Just try it and I'm gonna show you. Okay, so let's compare breakfast cereal to avocado and eggs. Now this avocado, which is already a very energy dense food for a whole food, is 240 calories. And then this cereal I have here, the serving size on the packaging, which is almost always BS because people will eat more than that, is 45 grams. Let's see how much 45 grams of this cereal is. Oh my goodness, that's 35. Okay. 45 grams, it's tiny. Look, look at my fist. Compared to 45 grams, nobody is gonna eat that other than maybe a small kid. Every adult is gonna eat more than 45 grams, okay? And this 45 grams is rounded to, it's 159 calories, so let's say 160. So for this cereal to be the same as the avocado, then I need 67 and a half grams of cereal. Again, okay, this might be a proper serving size of one adult eats. This is 240 calories worth of cereal. Let's add a bit more to make it around 270. This is 270 calories. And guess what this will be? It will be two eggs and half an avocado. All right, so I have cooked two eggs. I cook breakfast my girlfriend these days. What a lucky girl. This is the cereal. This is about just over 300 calories of a healthy cereal. This is not even, the unhealthy stuff. This is meant to be the healthy stuff, okay? And it has the same amount of calories as two eggs. All this avocado, that's half an avocado and a bunch of blueberries, okay? 300 calories of this, or 300, just over 300 calories of this. I haven't even put the milk in the cereal yet. And guess what? This is on the labeling, okay? I live in Taiwan, so it's in Chinese, but this cereal, has, which is meant to be healthy, okay, is branded as a healthy cereal, has almost 20 grams of sugar in it. And if you I used to eat healthy cereals, like this brand, I mean, it's granola. It must be healthy, right? It looks so healthy. And it says natural ingredients. High in fiber. Oh, I mean, that fiber, we just need that fiber, right? And no added refined sugar. Turn it around, however. What's here? Oh, this is in Chinese again. Check out how much sugar is in it. In 100 grams, there's 20 grams of sugar in it. And it gets worse if you look at kids' cereals. Okay, we are in the supermarket. There are about five people in the supermarket. Why are there three people right by the cereal where I'm filming? Well, I don't care. Oh, look at all this healthy cereals with lots of sugar in it, I bet. But 
What I really want to focus, parents, is the Kellogg's. Now, when I was a kid, I loved Cocoa Pops. Now they got Cocoa Frosties with a really cute tiger to make the kids really want to eat this. So one portion is 30 grams. Uh, but you should always look at the 100 gram uh, stats. And they, for 100 grams, they have 33 grams of sugar in this product. This is in Chinese, but it says sugar. 33 grams of sugar per 100 grams of product. Am I gonna get arrested filming in here? Anyway, and I like it how they, they uh, adjusted the serving size with that per serving. It's only 9.9 .9 grams of sugar per serving. So it doesn't look like it's 10 grams, it's rounded down. But what's important is a third of this product is sugar. Your kid is gonna get freaking fat and get diabetes, get inflamed brain and uh, oh, I'm in, I'm in trouble. Somebody, one of the staff is looking at me as I'm filming this. All right, I gotta go, bye. Whoa, that was weird, man. I was in the supermarket filming and the staff was standing behind me with a really stern look. So um, if I film this type of stuff in future, do I need to wear a mask? Because that shop employee was not impressed. I think uh, it's, it's, I'm lucky that I'm, I was bigger than him because he looked like he really wanted to throw me out of the supermarket. So I just want to say one thing. Before 1980, there was very little, let's just talk about diabetes, not even like cardiovascular disease, not strokes, not cancer and stuff like that. I mean, all these diseases have gone up together as the population has gone more obese, as we eat more and more processed foods and fast foods and stuff. But before 1980, just diabetes. In the adult population, unless they were alcoholics, almost none, okay? And apart from type one diabetes, which is when people are born without the ability to produce insulin themselves, there was like literally very little type two diabetes. And in children, type two diabetes was unheard of, okay? Nowadays in America, there's almost 10% uh, of kids have type two diabetes. It's just freaking insane. I mean, kids are not gonna get diabetes because they're so young still uh they have to eat a huge amount of sugar to get that and i don't know what parents are doing letting their kids eat it that much sugar um it really sets them up for a bad start to life because sugar is highly inflammatory so you can google sugar inflammation and see all the harm sugar does in fact they feel that sugar has such a big impact on the brain because it inflames the brain as well, not just the body, that uh, it's a cause for Alzheimer's disease. You can Google this as well, type three diabetes, okay? A lot of researchers are starting to label Alzheimer's disease type three diabetes because the uh, sugar causes um, insulin resistance, which is, we, when we repeatedly um, secrete insulin to bring down the blood sugar, to put the sugar into our fat cells, we no longer become sensitive to our own insulin. And that's when we become a diabetic um, and kids are getting it. And uh, the inflammation as well is causing people to like lose their minds. They can't you know, think anymore. Um, that's what I had last year. My, I had really bad brain fog and um, my short-term memory is going. So if you want a really healthy diet, just eat eggs and proteins and meat. You can even eat bacon. I mean, it seems like really fatty, but the traditional English breakfast was eggs and bacon and nobody had heart disease and stuff before, they only started getting it in the last 40 years after the diet switched to a really high, high carb diet. So that's all I wanted to say to you parents. 
Don't be alarmed if your kid's been eating cereal for the last 10 years. They can bounce back real quick, but it's a good idea to stop doing it. You know, just, just uh, now that you know, just uh, make better dietary decisions for your kids. And I know cereal is very convenient. That's why I was eating it before and messing myself up. But uh, maybe it's good to invest five minutes in the morning to cook some eggs, you know. Boiling eggs is super fast. So, if you can help me out and subscribe to the channel, like it and share it with your friends, it'll help me out a lot because if one day I can make money from this YouTube channel, I can pay for my legal fees when I get sued by all the big cereal companies.